Hey folks, Jonathan Bennett here with something big to tell you about Meshtastic. So first off, we have a version 2.4 release that just had a beta. The 2.4 series of releases has some great features like active scaling of the regular interval traffic based on the mesh size. Then there's the user press file that gets referenced at build time. So you can set system defaults for a hard to reach node. That way, if it ever comes up after say a spontaneous factory reset, it comes up with the right settings. That work also came in extremely handy when building the custom firmware for DEF CON and Burning Man. At DEF CON, we know of at least 732 nodes on the official CON channel and the network didn't fall over. Another developer spent time tracking down some sneaky file system bugs, and as a result, it's even harder to bugger your device's file system. We fixed some security things and lots more. All right, after 2.4.3, we shoved all of 2.4 into a branch and merged a massive patch set into master, soon to be the Meshtastic 2.5 release series, and 2.5 is going to be incredible. But to understand why, you need to know how every other version of Meshtastic was, um, less incredible. <clears throat> Encryption! It seems like magic. You do fancy math, and your data turns into gibberish. You do more math on the other side, and you get your data back. That magic, aka encryption, generally comes in one of two different flavors. You have the magic that uses pre-shared keys and the magic that uses some sort of a public key infrastructure, PKI. All right, pre-shared keys are the easiest. I know the secret. If I want to send a message to Ben and Ben knows the secret, we're set. Meshtastic uses AES, the advanced encryption standard. That takes a plain text message and a secret key. I feed the black box with those two things, I get the ciphertext out. Unless you know the secret, the ciphertext is gibberish. But Ben knows the secret. So I can shout the ciphertext as loud as I want, and it really doesn't matter who hears it, so long as Ben does. He can decrypt because he has the secret to feed back into the black box. That is how Meshtastic works. That bit of secret is what makes up most of a QR code that you scan when you add a channel. But this approach has a problem. Let's say I have a channel share between me, Ben, and Garth. When I send a message, they both get the message. But what if I want to tell Garth that Ben is uh, dressed a little funny today? The way Meshtastic has handled this is to use the same shared secret that Ben and Garth know, shout it just as loud, but include a nice little note that this message is shh, just for Garth. The problem is it's trivial to snoop on those direct messages if you know the shared key that's being used. In fact, there's a website out there that does just this. It spits out all of the direct messages that are sent over the MQTT server. Awkward. All right, keep in mind, this was never a secret. It's right there in the documentation. Now, Back in 2022, a GitHub user operating as Edenin Edenin published a patch that implemented a public key encryption in Meshtastic. Public key encryption is a different flavor of encryption magic. Rather than just everyone using the same key, each, generator, gener each user generates a pair of keys. One of these keys is the private half of the key pair. I keep it secret, the other I tell everyone about. Ben does the same thing, and so does Garth. I know my secret key, and I know their public keys. The mathematical magic here is called a Diffie-Hellman key exchange. That takes Ben's public key and my private key and gives me an output key. Ben then takes my public key and his own private key, and he does the exact same Diffie-Hellman function. The magic trick is that when we each do that, we get the same key out. We now have a shared key that only the two of us know. So I can whisper to Ben that Garth's shirt is boring. Garth won't hear about it. All right, there were some hesitations expressed with the 2022 patch. Unfortunately, it was never completed and it was never merged. Without a developer driving it forwards, it bit rotted. About a week ago, I grabbed this code, I walked through it line by line, and I got to the point to where I feel like I understood how it functioned. And then I did the work of massaging it into modern Meshtastic. And surprisingly, it worked. 
there were some parts in there that we really didn't like, and there was a bunch of flash usage and RAM usage, and that's not great for underpowered IoT devices, but the core concept was solid. Since then, there has been a heroic effort put forth by the Meshtastic devs to whip this patch set into shape. It's not quite what we would call stable, but it is far enough along that there is a very experimental tech preview available right now. The iOS app has a pretty decent support in place for the new features, and the rest of the clients won't be far behind. So we now have public key encryption for direct messages, arguably with a little bit better security than regular encrypted messages. We managed to squeeze in a message integrity check for all of those PKI messages, so you can be sure that the message you get is exactly the one that was sent. But wait, there's more. <laughs> PKI also lets us rework remote administration. So that no longer uses a single pre-shared key for all the nodes, which results in a vastly more secure remote administration system using PKI. We're also testing LoRa in turbo mode for a whopping 21.88 kilobits per second. <laughs> Whoa. And the best part is that all of this is basically all backwards compatible. Devices running the 2.5 firmware will automatically send and receive old style direct messages with older peers. The old admin channel can still be used, although it's disabled by default, and old devices will happily forward PKI packets the same way that they forward any other packet that they can't decode. Exciting things are at hand for Meshtastic. Hey, if coverage of Meshtastic, Linux, and other tech stuff is your jam, give this video a like, consider subscribing, and you might want to check out the Untitled Linux Show over on twit.tv or Floss Weekly, now at Hackaday. Not to mention the weekly security column that I write there and goes live every Friday. And hey, if I've personally earned a tip, you can find the tip jar at buymeacoffee.com slash jbennett. And thanks for sticking it out till the end of the video. Let me know if you want an even deeper dive into how exactly the mesh-tastic cryptography works. But until next time, happy meshing.